Wow, guys, look how fast March just flew right by. So, of course, that means that we're going to continue this series that I just started last month and tell you everything that I've been watching in the month of March 2023. All the movies, all the TV shows, and you guys, of course, can play along as well. And let me know in the comments below what you've been watching in March 2023. So, March was an interesting month here uh, for me because I did a lot of rewatch. There, I mean, there was definitely a lot of new content that came out this month, and I, I checked out a lot of it. It, uh, not so much in theaters, uh, but a lot of new streaming content that I checked out. But there, there was also a lot of rewatch stuff uh, that I got involved in as well. Um, and of course, before we get into this, I do want to give you a quick reminder that if you don't already, make sure to go follow me on Instagram because that is where I do actually post actual individual posts about every movie that I watch. You know, I keep a count of like, oh, this is how many movies I've watched this year. I just, um, uh, The Truman Show, I just put that's um, my t 21st movie of 2023 that I've watched. Um, you know, I'm a busy guy, so I don't really like watch a movie like every day, like some people do. I mean, that would be awesome to be able to do. I just don't have the time for that. Um, so I feel like this is maybe a little bit less content than I watched in February, but still, I, I watched a pretty decent amount of stuff in the month of uh, March 2023. So let's uh, let's take a look at it. We're going to start off with the movies. I decided this time we're going to chunk out the movies, and then I'll go into the TV show. So starting off with movies, the first movie I watched this month was Creed, the first Creed movie, and this is actually my first time watching it. I'd never seen any of them, um, but i just been seeing the, the trailers for Creed 3 and it just looked like a really good movie and I was really hyped up for it um, and I'd heard how good these other movies were uh, so I decided to finally watch Creed. Now I haven't seen the original Rocky movies either so that is definitely on my watch list to watch those at some point as well um, and I watched this first Creed movie and it, it was great like I love this so much it got me so hyped up I love like inspirational motivational sports movies like this especially uh, one with like a great cast like Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone, Tessa Thompson. Like this was a great movie. I, I really enjoyed this. And um, the only thing I'm disappointed about is that I just didn't have the time to watch Creed 2 and Creed 3 because now I really want to watch those. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to watching those at some point. But the first movie was all that I was able to get to in March. The next movie I watched uh, has a bit of an interesting story. So Scooby-Doo and Crypto 2 is a movie that technically has not even like actually released yet. Um, if you don't know the story on this, this movie actually leaked online through Twitter via a Google Drive link. Um, <laughs> and so when that happened, I was like, you know what? I kind of want to watch this. So I watched it. And uh, I did do a full review and breakdown on my other channel, The DC Life. So if you want to go check that out, um, I highly recommend doing that. It was actually a really good film. Like, you know, lately, like in recent years, these direct-to-DVD animated Scooby-Doo movies haven't been the greatest, but this one was actually pretty good. Um, like, it, like, it was a decent balance between Scooby-Doo and DC. Like, there were some amazing DC references. So if you're, if you're a DC fan, I highly recommend this. If you're a Scooby-Doo fan, I highly recommend this at all. And if you're both, like me even better. Uh, so Scooby-Doo and Crypto 2, again, it's not released yet, and we don't know when it will be released, but I've already seen it. Now, the one movie I did get to see in theaters this month was Champions. This was uh, the movie where Woody Harrelson stars as a, a college basketball coach, he ends up getting fired, and then becomes a drunk driver, gets in a car crash, and uh, his it, sentence is to coach this uh, this unified basketball team of uh, adults with mental disabilities. And uh, this was a great film. I really enjoyed this. I did do a review of this on the channel. If you haven't already, make sure to go check that out. Uh, this is a really fun, heartwarming movie. Um, it was just really, really funny at times, and really heartwarming at times, really heartbreaking at times as well. Um, just a really good one that, you know, it's a smaller film that you don't really need to go see in theaters, but like when it comes out on DVD, digital, all that stuff, I highly recommend Champions. Then we get into the Oscar contenders because of course the Oscars were early this month. So leading up to the Oscars, I watched some of the big Oscar contenders that I had not seen yet. The first, which being the Banshees of Inisherin, which was nominated for Best Picture, I believe, and of course Colin Farrell was nominated for uh, Best Actor. And this movie was weird. Like it was, 
it was good, but it was weird. Uh, so if you don't know what it's about, basically Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson's characters, they're like best friends. But at the beginning of this movie, all of a sudden, Brendan Gleeson decides he doesn't want to be friends with Colin Farrell anymore because he's, quote, dull. Um, so it's just like this whole thing that ends up turning into this crazy rivalry. And, uh, you know, spoilers here. I, I just need to talk about this because this is where it gets weird. Uh, Brendan Gleeson's character starts talking about, oh, if you come near me one more time, I'm going to start cutting off my fingers. And then he does. He does that. He chops off his fingers and throws them at Colin Farrell's house. And like, it's just... It's a weird movie. I mean, the movie has great performances. The best part of this movie is the performances from Colin Farrell, from Brendan Gleeson. Uh, Carrie Condon was great in this. Also, uh, Barry Keoghan as well. Great cast. Just a weird, weird story. Like, really weird story. But then, on the, uh, the happier note of Oscar season, we got The Fablemans. This, I do not believe, won any Oscars, but this is, of course, uh, the movie that Steven Spielberg wrote and directed, and this is kind of like Steven Spielberg's origin story. This is based on his real-life childhood, his real-life parents, and this is a great film. I really, I really, really enjoy this because this is not only kind of, um, I love seeing a story about a boy fall in love with filmmaking. I love that aspect of it as well. But also just seeing him and his relationship with his family. You know, I always talk about how what I love I love a movie that will show me something about the complexity of human beings because human beings were so complex and we don't always make the great the greatest choices. And the mother in this movie makes a choice that is interesting and it hurts a lot of people but is benefiting others, like, you know, her, her, herself. Um, and it's really tragic, but at the same time, you really understand where she's coming from. And uh, Michelle Williams' performance in this movie is so, it's just mm, chef's kiss. It's beautiful. I, I talked about it in my uh, Oscars predictions video about how, you know, nobody was really talking about her really being a, con a contender. I mean, she was nominated and everything, but it was all down to like uh, um, Michelle Yeoh and uh, Kate Blanchett. Where I was like, you know, I really wouldn't mind if Michelle Williams won because just like there's certain scenes in this movie where like you can just see the guilt in her eyes and it's just Mm, I loved it so much. It's also a great coming of age story, uh, getting to see young Sammy Fableman, you know, go to prom, have the girlfriend, all that stuff. It's great. I, I really enjoyed the Fablemans. And if you're a big fan of Hollywood and filmmaking and uh, just movies like this and specifically Steven Spielberg films, I highly recommend it. Now, finally, the big one for Oscar contenders was the whale. I mean, everything, everywhere, all at once. Obviously, that was like the big one. Uh, but I watched that at, um back in January at the beginning of the year. Man, I love that film. There's a reason that movie won like seven Oscars or somewhere around that. But Brendan Fraser's The Whale did also win actually two Oscars. One for uh, makeup and hairstyling, and of course, Brendan Fraser himself won Best Actor at the Oscars in 2023. So I didn't get to watch this movie until after the Oscars, which I was kind of a little disappointed about. Uh, but I didn't get to see it in theaters, so I had to order it on DVD. And I pre-ordered it and everything, but it didn't officially release until literally like two days after the Oscars. So I ended up watching it after that. Um, and, you know, knowing that he won as I was watching this, like, it, it wasn't uh, watching it before and being like, oh, this is why he should win the Oscar. It was watching it as like, okay, this, I see why he won the Oscar. He so deserved it. Like, this performance was amazing. And this movie, again, as I mentioned before, it's about the complexities of human beings. And this film is just, it's so, it's very draining when it comes to emotion because, like, every scene is so emotional. There's very little joy and happiness in this movie. Uh, but the little moments that there are, they're, they're the little bright spots. But for the most part, it, it's a it's a sea of sadness, but not in a bad way because it's compelling. It's a compelling story. It's compelling characters. And the other thing I like about it is that this is actually adapted from a play. And for those those of you guys that don't know, in real life, I'm an actor. I uh, you know I I do plays all the time. Um, so I really noticed the kind of play aspects of this film 
Like, for example, the fact that there are so few characters. And uh, the whole movie takes place in this one apartment. It all takes place in Charlie's apartment, which makes sense because, you know, if you're going to do a play, it's it's kind of hard to go and do all these different set changes, like keep it in one setting. That's usually easiest. Um, so, yeah, The Whale was great. Brendan Fraser was the highlight. I mean, the whole cast was great, um, but specifically Brendan Fraser. The Whale great movie. Um, I was kind of a little concerned going into it because I know a lot of people talk about like, oh, Brendan Fraser, his performance is great, but the movie itself is a little lacking. Personally, I really enjoyed the film. I thought it was great. I really loved it. And now finally, the last film that I watched in uh, 2023 uh, for March uh, was The Truman Show. A bit of a throwback movie here to the early 90s. Uh, the Truman Show starring Jim Carrey. So this movie uh, we watched in my film and lit class at school. Uh, we were presented with options of like, I think like maybe five different movies from like IMDb's top 100 rated movies of all time. And there were, you know, there were some great ones in there, like uh, The Dark Knight, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, uh, Inception, Interstellar, stuff like that. And The Truman Show was on there as well. And The Truman Show was the one that I voted for because this was one that I had heard about. I mean, obviously all these other ones that I had heard about um, I mean, D The Dark Knight and The Spider-Verse, I had seen those. I knew those were great movies, but I wanted to watch something new. And this was not only something new, but something I had heard great things about. And me personally, I am a huge fan of WandaVision, the first MC Disney Plus series. I love that show. And that's specifically where I heard about this movie the most is because uh, WandaVision took a lot of inspiration from this movie. And watching it, I definitely, definitely see that. Plus, getting to see Jim Carrey in a performance that's not entirely comedic i mean obviously there's some moments in here as well um when it comes to comedy but for the most part like seeing him in a more serious role it was really quite interesting and this this movie is such a it's just a really cool reflection on society of for those who don't know what it's about basically jim carrey's character of truman he is a person that from birth has been on live television like this show has been built around this guy named truman and he has no idea that he is the star of this reality tv series meanwhile everyone around here is him as actors and this whole he's basically living inside a dome so this whole world he is in is completely fictional and everybody on the real world is just watching from the outside and it's insane especially when he gets those revelations of like i'm not real i'm just a character on tv even though he technically is a real person um it's also an entirely quotable movie movie as well um like like one quote i believe i'd heard about it before the movie as well and if you haven't seen it you may have heard of it as well is where truman you know like very stereotypical like he would see his neighbors and he'd be like oh good morning and then he would go and if i don't see you Good, e good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Like, that, that's just a classic thing. And when they bring that back to the ending as well, I, I, I love that. Um, and then there was another quote in here uh, that, again, goes back to the whole society reflection thing. There, there's something along the lines of uh, people are willing to accept the world with which they are presented, which I just thought was such a, um, an incredibly profound, meaningful, really powerful, and really true statement. Uh, so The Truman Show, again, a bit of a throwback, uh, but it was a great movie. I, I really, really enjoyed it. But moving on to series, of course, we have first got to talk about The Last of Us, the great show, The Last of Us. Man, The Last of Us, I, I mean, it, it started in January, went through February, and ended in March. Um, this show is so good. I, I talked about it in my February video I love this show. I had no prior experience with the game. I really didn't know anything about these characters, the story, or anything. Um, but I got to experience it through this show. And through this lens, it was so well executed, so well done. The performances from Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal, amazing. I mean, literally everybody on the show. The story, everything that went down in the show was great i mean the twists the turns i love also how they incorporate some of the actors from the video game as well as different characters just the last of us was great and i'm so excited for season two um i really don't know much about the second game either so i'm really excited for uh to see what other surprises are in store for me as well then we got another show uh this one is from disney plus that is big shot uh so this is very 
it's very much a Disney Channel type show. I think this show actually was originally supposed to be a series on ABC, but then when Disney Plus became a thing, they switched over to be a Disney Plus original. Uh, so I watched the first season when it originally came out. I really enjoyed the show. I was really excited for season two. Season two came out in October and they dropped the whole season in one day. Um, so I was kind of concerned. Um, and then the, sh the show ended up getting canceled after that second season. I didn't end up watching it until very recently. Obviously, that's why it's in my March video. Um, but it was great. I mean, th this show was good. Um, I do think maybe the first season was better, but I do feel like, um, even though I feel like somehow they probably knew that season two would be the end, even though that's kind of crazy that like after two seasons, it would be over. I mean, it's understandable. Like the show didn't get great viewership or anything, but I feel like the way that they ended it, like it was so perfect. Like that finale was amazing. Like they did a lot in this second and final season. Uh, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm, I'm sad that it's over, but I'm really happy with that ending. I mean, it worked out really, really well. Then when we get into the rewatch stuff here, uh, with speaking of WandaVision, we have some Marvel Studios MC Disney Plus content here as well uh, with Moon Knight. So Moon Knight came out uh, actually exactly a year ago yesterday on Disney Plus. And so with this being a March debut series, I was just kind of in the mood and uh, I was making a video on my channel, The Marvel Life, about uh, possibly a, a Rama Tut, Kang the Conqueror variant appearing in a possible Moon Knight season two, which still has not been officially confirmed. Uh, but I wanted to make that video and I was like, you know what? I let's just rewatch Moon Knight. So I did and it it's still great. I know a lot of people kind of hate on the show because it's not super comics accurate. Um and obviously like, you know, it's Disney Plus, so they kind of hold back on the gore and stuff like that, but I still really enjoyed this series. I really had a lot of fun with it. Uh, Moon Knight has always been a character I've really enjoyed, so really getting to dive into him here, not only from the superhero side of things, but also the um you know, the whole th dissociative identity disorder, that was, I think, so something that I didn't really know about the character before this show, but I thought was such an interesting aspect to explore, especially, you know, usually in the comics, Mark Spector is Moon Knight, but in this series, making Stephen Grant the first character that you meet, especially having such different personalities with Stephen Grant being the, you know, he's all British and all that stuff, um, you know, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, my name's Stephen with a V, like, that's great, I, I love that Stephen was a hilarious character, and Mark was great as well, and of course, there's some great teasing and setup with Jake Lockley for season two, uh, you know, Moon Knight wasn't perfect, but I really enjoyed it for what it was, and I really do hope and am excited for a season two. Now, speaking of Marvel Studios' Disney Plus series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier also debuted in March, except this was two years ago, and this I just started rewatching a couple days ago, uh, so I have not finished it yet. I watched, I think, the first four episodes, yeah, because the, the last episode I watched was uh, the one that ended with uh, John Walker, you know, using the Captain America shield to, like, smash that guy to death and just that's like such an iconic one of the most iconic endings to a disney plus episode ending was just the captain america shield covered in blood that was great uh this is another show that i feel like really gets hated on uh but this was the second mcu disney plus series we got and it did also kind of suffer because of the pandemic not only because of reshoots and having to do all that stuff but there was originally a whole storyline behind the flag smashers with some sort of vaccine and there's some sort of virus and stuff going on so it makes sense why they would cut that out uh but honestly i think what we have in here with the flag smashers that's one of the biggest complaints i see here is with, oh the villains the flag smashers i didn't really care about them they're not great but i do i do find enough with them to attach to and of course you know this being the story the uh the origin of sam wilson becoming captain america that was great to see seeing bucky go through his trauma his ptsd from finally escaping the winter soldier bringing back baron zemo bringing back sharon carter which i'm eh, i am still not a fan of that and the choices they made with her and the character and her uh, her character in the show uh but introducing john walker wyatt russell's that character is great this show was awesome, and I'm really, really excited to see, especially now that they're filming the movie uh, for Captain America New World Order, which will basically be a sequel to The Falcon and Winter Soldier. So I'm really, really excited for that. I'm really excited to watch these, uh, these last two episodes of The Falcon and Winter Soldier. Now, a brand new series that came out on Hulu... Uh, uh, just about a week ago now, uh, was up here. And this was a musical rom-com series. I did do a review for it on the channel. 
I have very mixed feelings on the show. Um, I'm not going to go too much further in the detail on it. The main reason I watched it was for the cast because Carlos Valdez, I, I was a huge fan of him as Cisco on The Flash. So he was great here. I mean, uh, Mae Wetman as well. She was in The Duff. The cast was great, um, and the music was good for the most part. It's just, uh, I feel like this would have been better as more of like a Hallmark movie or uh, just a regular movie. I, I feel like making it a series really dragged things out and made things a bit repetitive that kind of made these characters a little bit unlikable. Uh, but uh, again, check out my review if you haven't seen it already. Now, as for the CW content, I did watch some Riverdale this month. Uh, Riverdale is a show that, I mean, I watched it in the beginning, and then when it started getting silly and bad, I kind of stopped watching it. Um, so I, I'm behind on the show, uh, but with the final season just starting a couple days ago, I decided, you know what, I'm going to try and get caught up. Um, so I was, let's see, this final season is season seven, I believe. So I have not seen season six, but I had like half of season five left to watch. So I finished watching season five and that's where I've left off so far. So at some point in April, I will get back to watching this, hopefully get through uh, season six and then hopefully I can get caught up uh, with season seven, the final season of Riverdale. And no matter how ridiculous and cringy and bad the show gets, you know, it's the final season. I, I might as well get through the whole thing and uh speaking of cringy uh but surprisingly not that bad is gotham knights uh so gotham knights is a brand new series on the cw uh which is uh, a show that everybody thought was a terrible idea everybody watched the trailer thought it looked terrible super cheesy and cheap and i gotta be honest um i've watched the first two episodes the first one i actually really really enjoyed the second one was all right but Gotham Knights is actually not that bad, if I'm being honest. Like, the only thing that's really bad about this is just the budget. I mean, the, it's a CW show, so, I mean, when you got a Batman mask that looks like something you could buy at a party store, and that's supposed to be, like, the real Batman, and, I mean, when Bruce Wayne has been murdered, and, it, well, when Batman has been murdered and is just Bruce Wayne in a regular business suit with a again, a party store Batman mask on, it looks ridiculous. And, um, you know, obviously there's the CW elements, the teen drama elements. So there's all that stuff that's not great, but I, I am, you know, I was a big fan of the Gotham show on Fox and this is what this is really reminding me of. Like, I just really would love to have a good live action Batman TV series because just having a live action TV series set in the world of Gotham is really cool. There's some great references in the show. Um, it, it kind of disrespects a bit of the uh, the mythology. Like there was a there was a character that popped up. So first of all, the main character of the show, his name is Turner Hayes. He is the son of Bruce Wayne in the show. Completely original character. So that's already screwing with the comics mythology and everything. But then there was this woman that was talking to him, and I said out loud as a joke, like, "Oh, let me guess, that's gonna be the Alfred of the show." That was supposed to be a joke, but oh my god, no, she is the Alfred of this show. Um, yeah, it, there, there's some things in the show that are kind of ridiculous, but if you kind of set those things aside, it's really not that bad. I mean, doing the Court of Owls and, um, I believe Azriel is going to be in this as well. Obviously we have, uh, Harvey Dent, Misha Collins is as great as Harvey Dent so far. I think he's going to transform into Two-Face at some, some point, so I'm excited for that. Uh, but yeah, Gotham Knights. And then we got the Flash. Um... There's been some bright points in the season, and then lately there's been some uh, terrible episodes that I haven't even bothered to watch yet. Um, the Red Death stuff, it didn't end up being the greatest, uh, but I did enjoy getting to see Grodd back. I mean, that was pretty cool. Uh, but with this being the final season, you would think the quality would be a bit better than this, uh, but you thought wrong. But it's so sad, especially when you ha I mean, you got shows like Gotham Knights, which isn't terrible, you got The Flash, which is kind of pretty terrible. And then you got Superman and Lois, which, oh my god, this show is so good. Like, not even just for a CW show. Like, this is a literally, like, this could be an HBO Max show and I would believe it. Because this show is so good. This is, like, one of the best versions of Superman I've ever seen before. It's amazing. Like, the storytelling, the characters, everything. Like, the only weak point of the show is maybe there's a, a little too many characters. And the, the first episode kind of proved that point. But... Other than that, like, this show's awesome. I mean, having some great characters in here, some great new villains I really don't know much about, um, like uh, Bruno Mannheim and Onomatopoeia. We know we have Lex Luthor coming in at some point. Um, 
this is just a great show. I've really enjoyed it. Also, um, I mean, a bit of a spoiler. It's not a huge spoiler, but like one of the quote unquote villains of this season is cancer. Um, because Lois Lane finds out she has cancer in like the second episode, I think. Um, and I think that's a great idea to do as a villain of a Superman show, because one of the problems with Superman is he's such an OP character. It's like, it's hard to do a villain that he can't just easily flick and like beat super easy peasy, but cancer is something that Superman can do literally nothing about. So his, the love of his life having cancer that's something that can break this guy. So I absolutely love that element. And that's just a really, really cool idea. Uh, and then we have for Disney Plus, we have The Mandalorian Season 3, of course, started up a couple weeks ago. This has been a mixed bag. I mean, it's definitely been the most lackluster season. It's really disappointing because, like, the first two seasons were so good. Like, that was, you know, the MCU shows, I would wake up at 3 a.m. when these episodes drop. The Mandalorian, sometimes I don't even watch these the same day they drop. Most of the time, I'll, I'll wait and I'll watch it that night. But sometimes it's, like, days later when I'll watch it. And that's really kind of sad because this season, it, we're, like, five episodes in, I believe, eight episodes in the season, there's only three episodes left, it's so directionless, there's, like, there's no play, place that it looks like this season is going, and, I mean, to be fair, the first two seasons, there were a lot of, like, side missions that Mando and Baby Yoda did, but it was still going somewhere, and this season, I just don't know where it's going, and there's been, there's been some highlights, you know, the cameos have been great, but, again, you know, not, w not putting in the effort to wake up early to watch this, those have been spoiled for me, so then that, you know, those cameos, knowing about that going into the episode, I'm really excited about that, but then that ends up being, like, the only good thing about the episode, and it's just really unfortunate, the best episode by far, I think it was episode three, um, which barely even had Mando in it at all. I mean, Bo-Katan is great here as well. Um, but episode three is my favorite. And that was kind of a, almost like a character study episode um, where we got to really see, um, I don't remember the guy's name, but like the the, the doctor guy that he used to work for, uh, for um, Moff Gideon. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that episode. Uh, hopefully it turns around by the end of the season, but so far, eh. Uh, then we have the Great Expectations series on FX and Hulu. Uh, this had its premiere last Sunday, so only the first two episodes have been out. I did do a review for this on the channel as well. I'm a big fan of the Great Expectations uh, story, and this is fairly faithful, but it's definitely a much edgier version with more like sex and drugs and swearing. And like, I don't really get what it adds to it. I don't think it's really necessary. I mean, I commend them for doing like a new unique spin on it, but it's eh. But then again, I'm only two episodes in. There's four left, so we'll see where it goes. And finally, man, the highlight of my month is Ted Lasso Season 3. I love this show. I watched it for the first time back in January and February. I got Apple TV+. Plus. I watched Ted Lasso, binged right through the first two seasons. I love this show so, so much. So to see it back for Season 3, now I got brand new weekly episodes. This is the highlight of my week. Wednesday night. I go, I sit down, and I watch my Ted Lasso. Because this is, you know, unlike the MCU shows where, like, if you don't watch it when it first comes out in the morning, you'll get spoiled. This show, this is a show you don't and really can't kind of get spoiled for. But, like, I just look forward to it. Like, Wednesday night, my day is over. I just get to sit down, watch Ted Lasso, laugh, have a good time, just feel good. And Ted Lasso is great. I mean, I... I, I love this show so much that in the last couple months, I have bought Ted Lasso socks. I just recently got some Ted Lasso pants, and uh, they're pretty great. Um, so yeah, I, I love this show so, so much. And, uh, you know, like I said, there, there were some other big movies that came out in theaters this month that I still want to see, like Creed 3, Shazam Fury of the Gods, Dungeons and, the Gra Dungeons and, the Dra Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Honor Among Thieves looks like a good movie as well. I've heard great things about it. Um, I just haven't had the chance to go to theaters much this month. Uh, hopefully that'll change next month. I am really looking forward to Air. Air is one that I'm really looking forward to, the uh, Ben Affleck directed movie uh, about the Air Jordans. I'm really excited for that. Super Mario Brothers movie, I might see that as well. We'll see. Uh, but for now, guys, that is a wrap on March 2023 for all the movies and TV series I've seen. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on everything I watched and everything you have watched in March 2023 as well. So, of course, stay tuned. Um, again, check out my Instagram for, like, you know, actual updates of when I watch these movies and all that. Uh, but for now, guys... Thanks so much for watching. Please drop a gift if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep it to date on everything goes on in the movie life.